Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Why don't we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why don't we rely on the one who created us? Why don't we rely on the one that has all the affairs of mankind in his hands? Why don't you rely on Allah azza wa jal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ Rely on the one that's alive and never dies. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find us as human beings. You find us as the creation of Allah. We rely on everyone except Allah. We think that everyone can help us and make something happen and make something take place except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our hearts are so attached to this world and our hearts are so attached to the creation and we forgot the creator. We need to rely on Allah. We need to attach our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us and Allah azza wa jalla commands us to make tawakkul, to rely on Him because He is the one that's worthy of being relied on. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, glory be to Him. Now that we have heard that each one of us should be preparing for the day we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have heard that Allah has said, I will definitely test all of you. And we have heard that the more tests you have, the better you actually become. The hadith says, "Idhamul ajri ma'a idhamil ibtila." And another hadith says, "Inna Allaha idha ahabba abdan ibtila." When Allah subhanahu wa taala loves someone, He places more tests in his or her life. More. So if you are having a test here, a test there, a calamity this way, a disaster that way, you need to know. If you have faith and conviction, Allah loves you. Fatima, her hands were ripped apart. This is a daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. Her hands became harsh, became coarse, became rough, because she would knead the dough, wash the clothing, take care of the home. So she said one day to Ali, "Go and speak to the Prophet." We've just received the booty. Some servants have come. Go and ask him to send a servant into our house to help us inside the house. Ali comes and he expresses his concern. The Prophet Muhammad listens to him. In the evening, he comes to visit both of them. He comes and he sits so close to them. They feel the body heat of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu They want to sit up out of respect. He tells them to stay there. He says, "Don't think I am unaware of what you requested." He could have given it to them as many servants as they wanted. He could have presented all of the companions to stand there and take care of his household. He said to them, "It's better for you every night to say Subhanallah thirty-three times, Alhamdulillah thirty-three times, Allahu Akbar thirty-four times." Yakfiqum. That's enough. You don't need these elements of the dunya. Ali says, "I never gave that up in my life. Never. When I fought, when I struggled, turmoils, calamities, difficulties, I went to sleep, saying Subhanallah thirty-three times, Alhamdulillah thirty-three times, Allah Akbar thirty-four times. You don't need antidepressant tablets to go to sleep." You don't need anything to go to sleep. Alladina aman wa tatma inu kulubu bi dhikr Allah. Ala bi dhikr Allah tatma inu kulub. Indeed, the dhikr of Allah do hearts find tranquility and find peace. That's what He told His beloved ones. Find that peace in your remembrance towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He could have offered them the whole of the dunya. Whatever they wanted is a fatherly love, but he taught them that lesson that they would never ever forget, and that lesson goes to all of us as Muslims that we begin to look at everything around us and fail to understand the best thing that we possess inside our lives is right here inside our hearts. Al Imanu Billahi Subhanahu Wa Taala. Alhamdulillah, Alladhi Hadana Li Hada. وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله. And then you have to realize everything that's happening is from Allah. You know you don't get depressed. 
people, if you forget about Allah, you end up getting depressed. You think things are black and they're gloomy. And do no, we don't believe this. We believe in happy endings. The root of Western civilization is tragedy. If you look at the major masterpieces of Western literature, they're all tragic. They have horrible endings. Everybody dies. That's not the Muslim view. Our stories in the Quran, they're all good endings. <laughs> if you look in the Quran, they're good endings. People, the good guys, the good people win. No matter how bleak it looks out there, it's dunya. You're in the lowest. Dunya means the lowest place. A dunya. We're on the bottom. There's only up from here. Really, there's only up. This place, wallahi, all of you, I'll give you sincere advice and myself. This place is designed to break your heart. It was designed that way. If you're looking to be happy in the dunya, you're in the wrong place. And that's why the Sahaba in times of Rakha, they were more frightened than in times of Shiddah. Because they said, Rakha la ta'aqibuha illa Shiddah. When things are easy, they're always followed by hard times. Whereas when things are hard, they're always followed by easy times. So they preferred to be waiting for the ease than to be waiting for the hardship. Because intidhar al-faraj, afdal al-ibadah, is a hadith. And it's hasan. Afdalul ibadati intidhar al faraj. The best worship is waiting for the ease from Allah to come when you're in hardship. As long as the musibah is in this world, it's a ni'mah. Because the real musibah is the musibah in the next world. So if you look at that and realize that it's, you're, we're in blessing, wallahi, the whole lot of us. Some may be more than others outwardly, more observable. But the whole ummah is in blessing. Wallahi, the whole thing. Palestine, Kashmir, Shishan, everywhere. We're in ni'mah. And you have to see it. You have to see it. Because we have... You know, the people of Kufar, they have no Lord. We have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as long as you have Allah, they can't take anything away from you. Everything you desire exists with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have Allah, you have everything you desire. If you don't have Allah, nothing you desire will make you happy. Nothing. It'll all in the end bring you misery. Wallahi. And that's the truth. It's not a lie. الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله